and welcome Croeso to Cardigan. Croeso i Abertavi. So today we're here in Cardigan. We're going to give you a little tour of the castle, the guild hall, the river, um, and of course, we're going to eat delicious things because it wouldn't be a Miss Hubnut video if we didn't do that. So firstly, we're down here by the river. Now this river is the River Tyvee. And the Tyvee runs from above Trigaron in Cors Caron, or the Tyvee marshes, the Tyvee pools. It comes down through Llandesil, Newcastle Lemlin, Hentland Falls, Kenarth Falls, and it comes out at the estuary uh, between Goober and Poppit. Now, if you go to Kenarth Falls, which is up the river, you can see the salmon leaping sometimes, which is quite an interesting sight. And if you go down river, of course, you've got the stunning poppet sands on the one side and you've got Gooba on the other side. And gooba has got some amazing viewpoints. So just a little linguistic point. So we're in Cardigan. Cardigan is obviously an anglicization and it's an anglicization of Ceredigion, which is the name of the county, which is Ceredig's land. The Welsh name for Cardigan is Abertavi. It is the mouth of the river Tyvee, and uh, that the, that's the river that's just flowing down there. And we're probably about two, three miles from the actual mouth of the river. But up until about the early 20th century, the, this used to be a big port and the boats used to come up the river, but it's got silted up. So it's not so useful for that anymore, unfortunately. But you can still take pleasure cruises. In fact, there's one of the little pleasure boats just there, which we've seen down at Poppet. Wonderful. And also another little linguistic point, the word for river is Avon. So that is the Avon Tyvee, the Tyvee River. We're going to move on. We're going to go and have a look at the castle. Actually, I digress. We're going to go and look at one of our favourite places. It's closed at the moment, but it's a nice little tip for places to come in Cardigan. We're here at one of our favourite spots uh, of all time. This is Pizza Teepee in Cardigan. It's a wonderful place just on the riverside very casual dining. You can sit under a teepee, they have fire, um, they do forest beer, so it's lots of real ales. They do their own cordials as well, which are really, really nice. And pizza, we, the one that we would really, really recommend if you can get it, is the uh, roast chicken pizza. That is the nicest pizza I've ever eaten in my whole life. Crispy chicken skin on a pizza? Sounds so wrong. It was so very, very right. So here we are beneath the majesty of Cardigan Castle walls. Now Cardigan Castle didn't always have walls. It's obviously got a very good strategic position. It's above the River Tyvee. You can see up the river for miles. You can see down the river for miles for any invaders that might be coming from the mouth of the river. Um, it was originally a Mott and Bailey Castle until 1166, sorry, 1171. Something else happened in 1166 until 1171 when the walls were built. Um, We'll expand on that in a moment, but yes, this castle, it passed hands from the Normans to the Welsh numerous times over history. As well as that, it was raised to the ground at one point, actually. The town of Cardigan was raised to the ground. I believe the term was burnt to the ground. And yet, the Normans held fast in the castle. But that changed with time. It's been in the hands of Llewellyn, Rhysap Griffith. Um, it's been given back to the Normans. And I'll expand a little bit more on that and the later history in a moment. So I mentioned that the walls of the castle were built in 1171. So in 1166, the castle was taken by Lord Rhys or Rhys ap Griffith. And in 1171, he built the walls. But in 1176, he did something else of massive note to the Welsh culture. He held the very first Eisteddfod here in Cardigan Castle. So what is an Eisteddfod? If you don't know, it's a festival of song, of poetry, of dance, of music. And they're a wonderful thing that all Welsh schools hold. The most important part of an Eisteddfod is the chairing ceremony because the poet or the bard is, well, it's, a, it's as simple as it sounds. They're given a chair, they're seated, and there's a beautiful ceremony where they declare peace and that the poet is, is chaired. Um, it's a hugely prestigious thing in Wales. Now, when I was in school, I actually won the Toulouse twice, which is the English equivalent. I wrote a poem, which my angsty teenage brain thought was wonderful. And I read it at the school prize giving and my headmaster afterwards approached me and he said, I was excellent, but um, could you write something more cheerful? Um, yes. Anyway, back to Lord Rees. So Lord Rees, or Rees ap Griffith, because he was the son of Griffith, he took the castle in 1166. 
and he built the walls. So he obviously had intentions of creating a dynasty within Cardigan Castle. However, when he died, his sons had other ideas. His sons were Mylgwyn and Griffith, who'd been named after his grandfather. And so his sons fought amongst each other. And actually, Mylgwyn handed Griffith to the Normans. And then, to add insult to injury, he sold the castle to the Normans. So the castle changed hands between the Normans and the Welsh, and it changed in the buildings that were on here as well. But the building of note is really Castle Green House that was built in 1805. And it was built, um, it's a Georgian mansion and it still exists today. The last person that lived on Cardigan Castle site was a lady called Barbara Wood. Her father, who was a shipping magnet, bought it in 1940 and they lived in Castle Green House initially, but the house fell into disrepair as she got older and in 1996 she actually left the site and went into a nursing home. So it was left alone and there were questions as to what would happen next with Cardigan Castle. Now the current owners of Cardigan Castle are Keredig Young County, Castle, County Council. They refurbished Castle Green House and all the buildings on here. They created 1176, which is the cafe building. Um, 1176, of course, in tribute to the first Ice Scatherbod. I would highly recommend coming for an afternoon tea here. I have been, and the vegan tea is also exceptional. Um, you can also stay here. There is a bed and breakfast. So Cardigan Castle, the music is back because they now hold concerts and performances and so on on the grounds of the castle. So the music is back where it all began in Wales. There are lots and lots of lovely little details here in Cardigan and this is one of them. Now, Mr Hubnut has just given me a rendition of this song. This is a very, very famous Welsh song known as Calon Lan. Um, he says sing it, I'm not going to. But it's... <laughs> are there humans around? Okay. Calon Lan and Llan Dioni Tec a chiwr na lilid los Dim ond Calon Lan all gani Can i'r dydd a chan i'r nos Beautiful. That's how it goes I'm sure people can do it so very much better than me So you join us now outside of Crust which is a lovely venue that we've been waiting to visit for absolutely ages We're coming here for brunch and donuts. I'm doubting at the moment, so donuts, I can't wait to eat these donuts. So Crust, a little bit of history on the building. Uh, previous to being Crust, it was Shopacardi, which was a hardware store, and um, was that for about 20 years, from about 1994. And previous to that, it was actually a car showroom, which you can probably tell from the expansive windows and doors and so on. Really interesting building. <laughs> Our food has arrived. Um, service has been absolutely fantastic. Attention to detail is just brilliant. Um, Ian has the creme brulee French toaster with Conti's ice cream on the top. All good. And I've got the Welsh breakfast. Um, I've got their, their beautiful bread. It is absolutely delicious. Um, they make their own baked beans, a lovely sausage, mushrooms. Absolutely delicious. I'm sorry we're not being um, overly descriptive, but my goodness me, it looks amazing and we need to eat it. So we've just had our brunch at, at crust and oh my goodness me it was absolutely superb if you know me you know i'm a bit of a service geek so he mr have he hates coming out with me because instantly i'm watching to see you know what's going on with the service but they made sure that the venue was ready before they opened and it was it was well worth doing so because it was just perfect it was perfect there were lovely bottles of water on the table um the service was very quick it was very friendly it was a hosted service um, and the food was absolutely sublime. I had the Welsh breakfast, which was delicious. Everything was cooked perfectly, high quality ingredients. Mr. Hubnut had a creme brulee French toast. How was that? It was absolutely amazing. I couldn't actually finish it. It was just magnificent, but very, <laughs> very, very delicious. Oof. And then, because I've been waiting for them for a fortnight, I thought I'd try their donuts. Um, and the donuts, oh my goodness, a salted caramel donut. I was silent for a moment. Now that tells you, speaks volumes because I am never silent. But I just took a moment for that donut. It was that good. I couldn't even eat them. I was too full, too much food. Well, this is testament to it. I'm dieting, I had a big Welsh breakfast and then um, I was eyeing up his halves of donuts. I didn't eat them, I didn't eat them. I might do later. 
but yeah crust well worth a visit service is spot on food is superb they've won so many awards for their bread and you can tell why it's just absolutely divine so definitely if you're in cardigan come along to crust okay so we're here outside shire hall which is a very important building in the history of cardigan i mentioned that the castle was used as a jail well this was the courthouse for 300 years from 1487 um, Previous to there being the Shire Hall on this site, there was actually a church and I believe human remains were found when they started to build the Shire Hall. Um, there's a fantastic article online by somebody called Glenn Johnson, who I believe worked here at one point, um, all about the history of the building and also some of the trials that went on. So when was the building built? It was built in 1712 in some form, a wooden structure, but as you can see it's rather more significant it's a big megalith of a building um, it took had a massive overhaul in 18 around 1844 and that was when the facade that you can see was created as well as that there is a clock on the side of the building which dates from 1844 and used to be run at a charge of one pound per year now in the early 2000s there was a lot of investment in cardigan high street shire hall didn't have its original beauty um, at that point in time so on the top of the building is a cupola i do apologize if you're an architect and i'm saying that feature wrong but what that is is the little domed feature on the top of the building um, if you can go into the shire hall it really is quite beautiful you've got six roman columns upstairs there's a, ro uh, a roman a stucco domed ceiling it really is a beautiful, beautiful building, but a building with quite a dark history. Um, and I have a personal history with this building, actually. My parents used to have a bookshop in this building. And um, when I worked there as a teenager, I can tell you that I did not want to be the last person left in this building. And if I was unfortunate enough to be that person, I would always sit just inside the front door waiting to be picked up. Um, the stories that we were told was that a woman was sent to Australia for stealing two pieces of paper. We were told that somebody had actually been hung upstairs in the courtroom. I don't know how true they are. Now, the interesting thing, having read Glenn Johnson's article, is that I think the lady with the two pieces of paper might actually come from a story of a woman who stole 24 pieces of note paper. Um, as happens with many people, she blamed drinking too much alcohol and they didn't actually send her to Australia. They actually sentenced her to a year and a half of hard labor. And she said, well, I think that would kill me. And the judge said, well, that might be a good thing. So it's quite a bit of um, bad history in the building, but it is a stunning building. It's very important to the history of Cardigan. It's been a theater, it's been a church, it's been a garage, it was a furniture showroom, um, and it's been adapted over the years. So for example, when it was the furniture shop, two balconies were put into the lower floor and you can still see one of those today currently it is a massive charity shop and i do love a good charity shop but yes this is Ch shire hall so this is dewey james butchers they're in newcastle emlyn as well and this is the home of the best faggots in wales if you're looking to cook your own faggots buy them from here these are the best so here we are outside studio three which has lots of local artists work and is also a brilliant cafe really really nice another place that's worth a visit we're outside the black lion hotel in cardigan um, it was a coaching inn it was originally a grog shop um, circa 1105 now there were buildings and so on in cardigan at that point so that may well be true i believe it was described in 1789 as a good house or something along those lines anyway very important building in the history of cardigan and just a linguistic point black lion translates as Llew D. with welsh the sentence structure is a bit like french and so on it's the reverse of the english so Llew D, which means lion black as opposed to black lion just a very quick one this sandwich bar just over here is called the big bite and you know when you have those simple foods in life that you just can't stop thinking about their garlic mayo chicken baguettes are just one of those foods they serve them warm with a little bit of pepper absolutely divine so if you're after a quick lunch big bite is my shout so we're just walking into this courtyard and in front of us you can see a shop called tiger's eye now when i was a youth in this area that was a very cool place to go tiger's eye so we're here outside cardigan guild hall which is the market hall this building was built in 1856 
When it was originally built, interestingly, it didn't have the clock tower, but it did have a chimney to the far side. Now, I'm intrigued, I was just thinking about it today, I haven't thought about it before. Why did Cardigan need two clocks? If there was a clock on the Shire Hall from 1844, why the need for another clock tower? I'm sure there's something intriguing behind that. But this building was built in the modern Gothic style, as you can see, and you'll see more when we go inside. And it was a very um, revolutionary building in its time. Now, Cardigan Market is a brilliant place to come if your washing machine breaks down, if your hoover breaks down, if you need flowers, come and see Jilly. Um, my parents used to actually trade in here as well. We had a stop me and buy one bike. That's the tricycle with a little free freezer on the front of it. And we used to sell sweets and whatnot. We sell books here. We sold jumpers here. Um, it's a wonderful place to be, if a little chilly at that time. Okay, so until a few years ago, this was a building, this building was known as a pop tea. A pop tea, pop tea is an oven in Welsh, and it was a bakery. Um, it's just undergoing some refurbishments, and in there, they've discovered this old signage for Connie's of Cardiff Limited. I don't know who Connie's of Cardiff were, but I just wanted to record this for posterity, because I'm sure whoever takes this building on next will probably conceal it again. So just a little treasure that was hidden and has been found. Okay, so we're now onto the bit, which I'm sure the Hublets no, I know the Hublets have been waiting for. This is yum yum. This is just about the best sweet shop around. It has every sweet you could possibly imagine. And it has the sourest sweets I've ever tried in my life. And Mini Hubnut has asked for some. So we're just going to go in and get some sweeties. I can't see, but I have come out with a substantial mass of sweets. We've got sour plums. We've got sour cherry. We've got fizzy cola bottles. And me, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I have got a load of licorice because I love the stuff. Now in a second, we're gonna partake in a sour sweet. So if you're into sour sweets, these are the ones for you. The Hublets are quite connoisseurs of sour sweets. We've had sweets from America. Um, they've tried the warheads and all that kind of stuff. And they've never beaten these. This is a mega sour plum. Oh. We're gonna give it a go. Ooh. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, cut, cut. So I mentioned a pop tea, which is no longer with us, but Cardigan has some really, really good bakeries. We've got Truly Scrumptious here, which has lots of delicious cakes. They've got branches in Aberystwyth and all over the place. Then just over the road, you've got the more traditional Queen's Bakery. Lots of delicious things in the window. I think I see a custard slice there, which is always a good thing. Up the road, you've got Cardigan Bay Brownies, which again, absolutely delicious, delicious things. Cardigan is quite a centre for lovely, lovely food. As we return to the lovely Ellie and our time in Cardigan comes to a close, just want to do a little nod to Weird Car Twitter and more importantly to Chod spotting. So if you are a spotter of Chod and you're in pursuit of the elusive early Ford Focus on an S plate, there is one in Cardigan. Now I'm being mean and I'm not showing you where it is but it's in Cardigan. There's also a W Reg Ford Focus estate, so that's pretty early as well. But yes, there is an elusive Ford Focus on an S plate in Cardigan. So that brings us to the end of our tour of Cardigan. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a lovely place to come. It's got amazing food, amazing baked goods, um, so many places to come and eat, lots of history, lots of culture, some beautiful buildings. Um, and lots of places to visit in the area as well. So if, so if you were to base yourself in Cardigan, you could go to Kenarth Falls, you could go to Poppet, where there happens to be another crust outlet. Um, not that we're obsessing slightly at the moment, but yes, lots to see and do around this area. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it is now starting to rain. We're better than we were on the Devil's Bridge because it absolutely poured down that day. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you again in another Miss Hubnut video. Bye.